The recent trades of P.J. Tucker and Trevor Ariza have sent the NBA into a frenzy. Okay, that's not quite the case, but it is showing that NBA teams are willing to make moves ahead of the 2021 NBA trade deadline. Rumors involving various players are coming at us fast, and in this video, I'm gonna explain some of the biggest names that need to get traded and where they need to go. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Half Court Report YouTube channel. My name is Troy. Make sure you like this video. If it's your first time here, make sure you are subbed up to the channel. I have quality and fresh NBA content several times a week on this channel and so happy that you can be a part of it with me here today. So NBA trade, trade deadline is coming at us fast and it's going to be here before you know it. So much player movement could happen and I want to talk all about it in today's video. I have lots of trades to get to, so let's not delay. Let's get right to it. One of the likeliest names on the move, and I've read this guy's name everywhere, Houston Rockets guard Victor Oladipo. He's on an expiring deal and is in high demand for teams that are trying to add to their playoff positioning by getting a legit two guard who can score, defend, and play winning basketball. So I like a deal with the Rockets and the Warriors. Victor Oladipo would go to the Warriors, the Rockets would get back Kelly Oubre, Marquise Chris, Jordan Poole, and a 2021 second round pick via Minnesota. So why would each team do this? Well, for the Warriors, it would give them another scoring option. They have to make the playoffs this year to maximize the window that they have with Steph Curry and Draymond Green. For the Rockets, they have to do whatever they can to salvage the James Harden trade because, let's just face it, it is looking like a really bad trade for Houston right now. So any extra pieces they can get, you go ahead and do it. Kelly Oubre is on an expiring contract, so maybe you can convince him during his time with Houston to re-sign over the summer. That's a nice little core. You can put him with Christian Wood and what I think will be a top three pick in the upcoming NBA draft. Jordan Poole is decent as a two guard. You can bring off the bench. And then that high second round pick via Minnesota, maybe you can get a steal there. I know I've got lots of Warriors fans who are subscribed to this channel, so I need you to let me know in the comments if you like this move or if I'm totally way off here. Rockets fans, I also want you to tell me what type of value does Victor Oladipo have for you. This next trade involves Lonzo Ball. He is another guy who I think is a prime target to get traded. Lonzo is a good player though. He can bring defense, passing, playmaking, and that ability to stretch the floor to a lot of teams. So I've got a trade with the New York Knicks and the New Orleans Pelicans. The Knicks, they get Lonzo Ball. The Pelicans get Frank Nielakina, Kevin Knox, and a 2021 second round pick via Detroit. So that would also be another high draft pick in the second round. So why did the Knicks do this? There are actually rumors that Lonzo would like to sign in New York. And by all accounts, New York is interested in Lonzo as well. The Knicks would have their point guard to put with RJ Barrett. Mitchell Robinson, and Julius Randle. They also really love Emmanuel Quickly, aka IQ, aka Manny Quick. Lonzo could play along with IQ. That would be an awesome defensive backcourt. For the Pelicans, they take a couple flyers on guys in Frank Nielakina and Kevin Knox. Neither of those guys has really panned out in New York, so it could just be an instance of get these guys on a different team, change of scenery, maybe it does us some good. They were two really highly touted guys coming into the draft a few years ago. These next two trades are going to deal with the Orlando Magic. I think they're a team, maybe more than anybody, that is going to make at least a couple of moves prior to the deadline. And I think this is a team that's willing to trade off a lot of their guys, except for Markel Fultz and Jonathan Isaac, two players who they say are untouchable. So this first trade involves Orlando and the Phoenix Suns. The Suns get Aaron Gordon. The Orlando Magic get Dario Saric, Jalen Smith, and a first round pick in the 2021 draft. For the Suns, you already have the big three, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and DeAndre Ayton. Aaron Gordon, though, is a guy that is best suited for that complimentary role, and I think that's a role the Phoenix Suns really need. 
He can make hustle plays. He's got solid defense. I think playing with other all-stars would do wonders for Aaron Gordon's game. The Magic get a solid big and a solid veteran in Dario Saric. They also get a young big man in Jalen Smith, who just a few months ago was a lottery pick. This next Orlando trade involves the Chicago Bulls. Here, the Bulls would get Nikola Vucevic and Al Farouk Aminu. They would send to the Magic Otto Porter Jr. and Wendell Carter. Vooch is another guy that teams really, really want, and they need a solid big guy in the middle. For Orlando, again, you get a big expiring contract in Otto Porter. Maybe you like him enough that you re-sign him for a cheaper deal next year. Wendell Carter, his game has never really translated to the NBA as of yet, but he has that potential as a rebounder and inside scorer. He's definitely a better backup option than what you have with Mo Bamba. Orlando fans, tell me what you think in the comments of these moves. And then I also got to talk about the Toronto Raptors. You know, I have never seen a team so devoid of quality big men. The Raptors have got to get somebody, anybody in there to help at that five spot. So how about a deal with the Cleveland Cavaliers? This is a pretty simple deal. The Raptors get JaVale McGee. The Cavaliers get Patrick McCaw and a future second round pick. The Cavs are tanking for a high pick. They have no need for JaVale McGee. Jared Allen is getting the majority of center minutes anyway. I think the Raptors could probably start JaVale McGee from the jump. He is just a big dude who can add some size to the lineup. He can get some boards, he can get some blocks, hustle and energy type of player. I really like this move for them. Raps and Cavs fans, tell me what you think in the comments. And speaking of teams that need another big man, how about the Lakers? The Marc Gasol experiment just isn't cutting it. I mean, come on, they've even signed Damian Jones to a couple 10-day contracts. This is a trade with the Grizzlies, and yeah, it's not to the level of Pau Gasol going to the Grizzlies back about 10 years ago, but this one involves another Gasol. This time, Mark Gasol and Contavious Caldwell-Pope, along with a lottery-protected future first-round pick for Gorgie Jing. And I will forgive you if you're not super familiar with what Jing is bringing to the NBA this season. You may not even have realized that he's with the Grizzlies, but when he does play, he brings shooting, defense, a veteran presence, and a smart player who's going to work well with the veterans that the Lakers have. For the Grizz, you send Mark Gasol back to Memphis, where he starred for many, many years. The fans would love this, and it would be a great story. Contavious Caldwell Pope, he's got that 3 and D potential that he could bring to the team. Not a huge deal by any means, but sometimes these small deals can make a huge difference. Grizz and Laker fans, let me know what you think. Then finally, this next deal involves J.J. Redick of the Pelicans. He's another guy likely on the move due to his leadership and his ability as an outside shooter, and he's on an expiring deal. A lot of playoff teams will want him on their roster. I've heard Brooklyn and Philadelphia are interested, but I like the fit with the Boston Celtics. The Pelicans would get Simi Ojale and two future second round picks. Not a bad haul for a 30-something-year-old J.J. Redick. Boston gets a solid addition to their bench. Pelicans and Celtics fans, let me know what you think in the comments. So there you have it. Lots of fake trades, lots of real players. Maybe some of these will happen, maybe some of them won't, but they all should happen. I think these are great deals that are really beneficial for each team involved. So that's all I've got for today's video, but if you enjoyed this type of content, would love if you leave a like, would love if you subscribe to the channel. NBA videos several times a week. Make sure to click the boxes on the screen for more NBA content just like this, and it really helps in supporting the channel. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Troy, and I'll see you next time.